Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Adrian and today we are going to have a look at how we can go and solve for the thermal efficiency of a real Rankine cycle. And we're going to do it using Python and the module Pyromat. So in front of you, you'll see a problem. This is taken from the handbook written by Sontag. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. But essentially we have a steam power plant and the schematic shows it starting from the condenser, pressurized, goes through a boiler and expands through a turbine before it returns to the condenser. And the problem states that a steam power plant operates on a cycle of pressures and temperatures as shown in the picture. So all the pressures and temperatures are given in the picture. And the efficiency of the turbine is 86% and the efficiency of the pump is 80%. Knowing that and having all the pressures and temperatures, the question asks us to determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to import Pyromat and we configure it. So import Pyromat as PM. All right, after it's been imported, we first need to configure it before we start because we need to make sure that all the units are as we want it. So we just say PM.config and here, we'll, here you will see all the information given and specifically, I'm just interested in unit energy, which is in kilojoules, as well as unit pressure. And you can see here it's in bar. The problem is our question stating everything in megapascal and kilopascal. So it'll be good if we change that. So you can do that by just saying pm.config again, and then we're just going to say as a string unit pressure, and we're gonna state that needs to be in kilopascal. All right, so now it's changed to kilopascal, and you can go and run this again, just to verify, and we can see unit pressure is in kilopascal, so that's great. All right, now that it's been configured, we want to load up multi-phase water, which we are going to use for the steam cycle. So I'm just gonna call it MP for multi-phase and it's water. And that is equal to pyromat.get. And for that, it is multi-phase H2O. All right, so that will load up all our steam tables for multi-phase water. All right, now that Pyromat is set up and ready to go. We can start inputting some of the values that's been given to us by the problem. The first thing is all our efficiencies. So I'm just gonna say that the efficiency of the turbine is eta turbine, which was given as 0.86, as well as for the pump that was given as 0.8. So that is 86% and 80%. Now we'll start off with the pump first. So there's some information given to us in the problem. So we get information of upstream of the pump, 10 kilopascal and 42 degrees Celsius, and then the pump pressurize it to five megapascal. So we can read that values in. So we know pressure at point one is 10, and this is in kilopascal. We also know that the temperature at point one was given as 42 degrees, but we need to go and convert that to Kelvin. So we need to add 273.15 to make it Kelvin. And now that we have the pressure and temperature, we can go and calculate the enthalpy 4.1. And that is our multi-phase water variable that we've declared, dot HS. HS meaning enthalpy at the saturation points. And we actually just need one value, which I'm gonna use pressure for. So we just want the first value, that's why I specify zero. So that's when it's saturated water. If it was one, that would have been saturated steam, but we're not interested in saturated steam, we're saturated water because we are still at the liquid phase. So where the pump is pressurizing the water, there's no steam at this stage. And then also pressure at point two was given to us, which was five megapascal. So we can just say that is 5,000. Now for a real Rankine cycle, an additional step comes in when you calculate the work needed by the pump to pressurize the water. And in the schematic, we can see that at point one, that is just upstream to the pump. And for an ideal Rankine cycle, the entropy would stay the same. So it will just be a vertical line upwards to 0.2. But in a real system, the pump is not 100% efficient. There are some inefficiencies. So that is why we follow this dashed line to 0.2 here. And some entropy is generated when the pump pressurizes the water. So you can clearly see the subscript S is for isentropic, that is just meaning that that's an ideal scenario versus the real case is actually at 0.2. So the equation for calculating the efficiency of the pump is the efficiency of the pump equals the difference of enthalpy between, between 0.1 
and 0.2 for an isentropic case when the pump is 100% efficient divided by the work needed by the pump in, in, in real life. And this is the difference between 0.1 and 0.2. For the isentropic case, we can actually substitute the difference between 0.1 and 0.2 for the isentropic enthalpy with the specific volume multiplied by the difference in pressure. And then we update the equation as shown and we can rearrange it to calculate the work needed by the pump. Looking at this equation, we have got everything we need to calculate the work needed by the pump to pressurize the water to five megapascal. So let's calculate all those variables. We're gonna start off first with the specific volume. So that is V1 equals one divided by our multiphase water variable. I'm dividing it by one because Pyromat calculates density, it cannot calculate specific volume. So it's just dot D for density and that is at pressure P1. Now we can go and calculate the work needed by the pump and that is our specific volume multiplied by the difference in pressure, which is P2 minus P1, divided by the efficiency of the pump. Okay, we're gonna print that out and also in the same breath, we're going to calculate the enthalpy at point two, which is the enthalpy at point one plus the work required by the pump. All right, we can run the cell and we get the work required by the pump is 6.3 kilojoules per kilogram and the enthalpy at point two is 198 kilojoules per kilogram. That seems reasonable, so we're going to move on to the boiler. So if we look at the schematic again for the boiler, again, we have a value at point three and a value at point four. Both pressures and temperatures has been given. Also, you can see there is a pressure drop between the outlet of the pump and the inlet of the boiler from five megapascal to 4.8 megapascal. That is due to pressure losses. This is very common in a real Rankine cycle because the pipes that's transporting the water, there's friction, there's bends. So this will cause a reduction in pressure. So the pressure that you will see at the outlet of the pump is not the same at the inlet of the boiler. So we can go and assign variables to all those values given. First off is the pressure at point three, which is given as 4,800. This is in kilopascal. We also have the temperature at point three, and that is 40 degrees plus 273.15, just to convert it again to Kelvin. Then lastly, we can calculate enthalpy at point three, which is our multiphase water, and we are calculating the enthalpy the saturation point and we are going to give it the temperature value of 0.3 and again we are taking the first value which is for saturated water not for saturated steam and then at the outlet of the boiler which is our pressure 4 it is now 4000 kilopascal so again there's be some pressure drop over the boiler and our temperature 4 is now raised to 400 degrees celsius which we then need to convert to Kelvin as well. And then having pressure and temperature, we can calculate our enthalpy H4. And here we just use H because now it's not a saturated liquid. We also don't know if it's saturated steam. So we just use H and this time we need to give it both pressure and temperature. And now having calculated the enthalpy before and after the boiler, we can go and determine the heat that was added to the liquid by the boiler which is Q subscript H. And that is just the difference between the enthalpy at 0.4 and 0.3. You can run this cell and we see that 3046.9 kilojoules per kilogram has been added to the liquid by the boiler. Next up is the turbine. So again, because it's a real Rankine cycle, the efficiency of the turbine is not 100%. We need to use the efficiency values given to us to calculate the actual work that was extracted by the turbine. And here's a little excerpt of the temperature entropy diagram. And we can see we're at 0.5, which is at the inlet of the turbine. And for an ideal Rankine cycle, again, it will be a straight vertical line downwards because no entropy is generated, but in a real system, entropy is generated. So it actually follows this dotted line over here. So we've got two points, 4.6. An ideal case, which is S, um, which is six subscript S, the isentropic point, and point six, which is our real rank and cycle point. 
back at the schematic you can see some information has been given to us so we've got some information of the inlet of the turbine which is 3.8 megapascal and 380 degrees celsius if you compare them between 0.4 and 0.5 again there's some pressure loss as well as some cooling of the steam because in a real system there is heat loss through the pipes when it is traveling to the turbine so first we are going to input the values given to us which was pressure 5 was given as 3800 kilopascal they've also given us the temperature at 0.5 which was 380 degrees and we convert that to kelvin and now we can calculate the enthalpy at 0.5 and this is again our multiphase water dot h and we give it both our pressure value as well as our temperature value something that we will also need here is the entropy at 0.5 we can calculate that and it is again just multiphase water dot s and we also give it the same pressure and temperature and that will calculate our entropy at 0.6 now we know for the ideal Rankine cycle again by looking at the schematic that the entropy at 0.5 and the entropy at 0.6 will be the same so we can say that s6s the isentropic entropy at 0.6 is equal to the entropy at 0.5 now that we have the isentropic entropy at 0.6 we can go and calculate the quality of the steam when it enters the condenser after it's been exhausted by the turbine so we can say that the quality at 0.6 for the isentropic case is multiphase water dot and here we're going to use temperature and we're going to say calculate temperature um, using entropy and here we give it the pressure value of p1 which is the condenser pressure we give it the entropy value which is also the isentropic entropy at 0.6 and then we want pyromat to calculate the quality so we say quality true and this will give us an array of two values one obviously will be our temperature which we don't really need we want the quality which is the second value in the array so we just specify we want the second value and then we're going to print it out just to have a look and see if the quality of the steam makes sense it should be multi-phase because we are inside our dome of the temperature entropy diagram after we've calculated the quality we can go and calculate the isentropic enthalpy at 0.6 so that is h6 for the isentropic case and that is multi-phase water and we want the enthalpy and we specify the pressure which is the condenser presser pressure and the quality which is x and this is for that has been calculated as well and i see now i haven't added an equation for calculating the work extracted by the turbine but essentially the work extracted by the turbine is your efficiency of the turbine eta turbine multiplied by the difference in enthalpy for the isentropic case which is h5 minus h6 subscript s and that will give us the actual work that's been extracted by the turbine now if we run this cell we get the quality of the steam steam is 0 0.8105 and the work extracted by the turbine is 894.5 kilojoules per kilogram right so now we have everything we need to calculate the thermal efficiency of the real Rankine cycle the actual Rankine cycle and to do that we need the network that's been extracted from the system divided by the total heat required by the boiler so the network is basically the turbine the work extracted by the turbine subtract the work required by the pump to pressurize the liquid divided by the heat that was provided to the boiler we can go and calculate eta thermal efficiency equals the difference of the work extracted by the turbine subtract the work required by the pump divided by the heat that we've calculated and then we can print it out and have a look thermal efficiency of 29.2 percent that is our thermal efficiency of the real Rankine cycle now for comparison and this is the nice thing which I really like about Pyramat and this Jupyter notebook is we can now go and we can scroll all the way back up where we defined our efficiencies here and we can say we're going to change that both to one which means they are 100% efficient making this whole system an ideal Rankine cycle so remembering that the thermal efficiency of the real Rankine cycle was 29.2% we have gone and changed the efficiencies of the pump and the turbine so now we can say to the Jupyter notebook to go and restart and run all the cells again and now it will update everything and we'll get a new value for the thermal efficiency and we're going to have a look and see what is the ideal Rankine cycle efficiency and there you can see we get 34 percent 
thermal efficiency for the ideal Rankine cycle. So clearly you can see the difference, the loss of almost 5% in efficiency compared to the ideal Rankine cycle and the actual Rankine cycle when you take into consideration pressure losses, thermal losses and efficiency losses of the pump and the turbine. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the comments below. You can also join the Discord server where you can ask questions as well. And I'm more than happy to answer them. See you in the next one. Bye.